Hello, this is Dr. Andrew Spieler from Hofstra University. I will be leading you through a brief PowerPoint presentation on the time value of money and calculator functions on the Texas Instruments BA2+. You may have an earlier version of a Texas Instruments calculator, or one that looks like this, or you may have a different calculator like an HP brand, you'll still be able to retain the basics of how to enter the calculator functions and do time value of money problems. First thing is that I will assume that the calculator was just taken out of the plastic and that all the default settings are in place. So we will need to adjust the settings so that we can do the appropriate time value of money calculations. We'll have to adjust the number of decimal points and the number of interest periods per year. Those will be our two adjustments. So first, we're going to set the number of decimals. You will first follow these instructions and you can follow along on the PowerPoint representation of the calculator. First, we'll hit the second and then format button. You will scroll up and down using the arrow keys. The arrow keys are located on the top of the calculator on the top row until you get to the DEC entry. That's the decimal entry. Then you'll enter the corresponding number of decimal points, at least four to minimize rounding error, and then hit enter. So on the calculator, again, you will hit the second key. That's the yellow key on the representation and then the format, scroll to the decimal, enter the number of decimal places for in this example, and then enter to complete the adjustment. Second adjustment is changing the default setting on the calculator from monthly to periodic interest. In other words, the calculator will take whatever interest rate you have uh, inputted and divide by 12. This will be incorrect for most problems that we're interested in, so we will need to make sure that the interest rate represents a periodic rate. The period will be for you to determine whether it's monthly or annually. So we will then hit the second and IY key, I slash Y, and then enter one and enter. So again, looking at the visual representation of the calculator, we will hit the second function and the IY, enter one so that the interest rate per period is just one, that will represent periodic interest rate, and hit enter. So at this point we have changed the decimals to four decimal places at settings, and we've changed the compounding or the interest rate feature from 12 periods per year to periodic one period. Now we're set to do some calculations. At any point, if you need to clear the register in the calculator, press the second and quit button. This will return you to standard calculator mode. And to clear time value of money functions, you hit the second and clear TVM functions. Again, to get back to standard calculator mode, second and quit. To get back to time value of money, to clear the time value of money worksheet, we hit the second and clear TVM button. Now a simple demonstration on using the time value of money keys. The key is to first enter the value and then hit the appropriate button. So the example would be if we were interested in uh, the future value of a cash flow stream of $1,000, enter 1000 first and then hit the FV key. So the 1,000 is the numeric component, and the FV tells the calculator that this will be assigned to the future value of a lump sum or annuity, depending on the remaining keystrokes that you enter in. Keep in mind that there are five important keys or functions on the calculator. Present value, future value, payment, interest rate per period, and N, number of periods. PV corresponds to the present value of a lump sum or the present value of an annuity. FV will represent the future value of a lump sum or the future value of an annuity depending on the problem. The FV has the additional interpretation as the lump sum or principal payment on a bond. So if you are doing a bond problem, 
The FV will represent the lump sum terminal principal payment at the time of the last annuity payment, the last coupon payment. Payment will refer to the periodic payment of an annuity. If you're just doing a lump sum calculation, then the payment entry will be zero. IY represents the interest rate per period. Very important that the interest rate per period is entered as a percent. For example, if we want to consider a problem with a 10% discount rate, enter 10, so you enter 1, 0, and then IY. Do not enter 0.1. If you enter 0.1 as a decimal, the calculator will interpret that as 0.1% or 0.001. So again, IY, very important, enter the number as a whole number, 10 in this example, and then IY. And finally, N will represent the number of periods in the lump sum, in the annuity, uh, in whatever the problem that you have. A simple example to illustrate these points, we will consider a 30-year bond that was issued at par 23 years ago, which indicates that there's seven years remaining. The coupon rate is 8% on an annual basis, and coupons will be paid annually as well. The yield to maturity on an annual basis is 10%, and the problem asks us to find the price of the bond today. So the price of the bond today will be the present value of the remaining cash rates. The price of the bond today will be the present value of a seven-period annuity of the coupons, and the present value of a lump sum, $1,000 face value, to be, to be received seven periods from now. The calculator can do these calculations quite simply. If you follow along on the PowerPoint, we'll notice that N equals seven, so you will enter seven and then N. IY is 10, the yield to maturity is 10%, so we'll enter 10 and then IY. The payment is 80, so we'll enter 80 and then payment. The future value or face value is 1,000, so we'll enter 1,000 and then hit FV. The only variable that's missing, the only calculator button we haven't used is the present value, so we will do compute present value. And we will notice that the price comes out to $902.63. Now you'll also notice a visual representation of the timelines. On the top, we have a generic timeline where the payments are indicated as an annuity and the face value is a lump sum at N at maturity of the bond. In terms of this problem, our annual coupon payments are 80 for seven periods and a $1,000 lump sum at time seven. Again, to follow step by step on the calculator, we will again hit seven and then N. We will enter 10 and then IY, 80 for the annual payments, and then the PMT button, 1,000 and FD for the face value, and then our last value will be the compute the present value. And you'll notice that we end up with a, uh, on the calculator display, a $902.63. Notice that the minus sign is not important in an economic sense. That's just part of the internal algorithm of the calculator. Okay? Just understand the interpretation of the minus sign. A couple of final notes and hints. Uh, again, when you're doing a calculation like for a bond problem, understand that the negative sign is part of the algorithm and that, uh, of course, the price of the bond was $902.63, so know the interpretation. If the problem calls for solving for the yield to maturity, the IY button on the calculator, meaning the other values were given to you, future value, present value, and, and payment, okay, then we need to enter the present value as a negative number. Again, that's for the internal calculations of the calculator. And finally, if a variable is not being used, always enter zero as a placeholder so that the former value is not stored in memory. And that will end our presentation.